We all know somebody like this. It's sour. Oh my god. It's sour too. Daddy. Oh my god, where they see you. Now, is that criminal genius or absolutely immoral? Well, some people are divided on this topic online, but this could be in part why the prices of groceries are going up. Well, welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. My name is Luke Radowski here of We Are Change the Drug, and there's a lot of absolutely crazy and wild news to get into today. As, of course, domestically, the situation is not all right, as the Biden administration keeps looking to make you more defenseless as the dangers we face keep growing and expanding as of course it does look like there are some individuals bravely fighting back for free speech and for your individual right to express yourself without any fear of repercussions and suppression by the state that desperately wants to shut down your ability just to be able to talk to each other but when the masses get strong enough nothing is impossible and we could potentially be on the forefront of such a major move as we are going to be talking about that, plus all the latest news here on this independent media broadcast. If you like the shirt that I'm wearing, you could get it on thebestpoliticalshirts.com. Atlas, could you please go to the other side? Thank you very much. That, of course, is my co-host. And the clip that we played in the beginning of this broadcast highlights some uh, ingenuity, especially when it, when it comes to those uh, businesses that recently got rid of cashiers and are expecting the robots to do a lot of the work that previously humans used to do. As humans always have a very interesting way of finding different workarounds. As uh, the conversation underneath this is pretty interesting. Some people are saying this guy's not doing anything wrong. Other people are saying he absolutely is doing something wrong. Other people are bringing up white privilege, as some people are also bringing up the fact that this person might have just recorded this video just to trap people, trigger them, and most likely probably ended up actually paying for his food at the end of this, as who knows what to believe anymore on social media, as of course there's a lot of clickbait and fake news out there that usually emotionally manipulates you for the purpose of generating clicks. In related people emotionally manipulating your news, we have the FBI director just coming out a few hours ago and warning that they need more of your money since there's, quote, elevated public and national safety threats that only the agency and themselves could stop if they get more money from the general public. This, as of course, we face a lot of national security threats especially with an open border, especially with people just being able to walk into the United States without proper identification, with also individuals literally being flown in into the United States illegally through your tax dollars as well. A lot of these people not being vetted, not even being questioned in many instances. A lot of these people just walking through the border, excused, let go, and even given free bus tickets, airplane tickets, and sometimes hotels and debit cards that you paid through your tax dollars, financing and bankrolling their larger kind of migration into the United States. This as the DOJ and the FBI are under the Biden administration that has been carrying out these policies are also saying that these policies put us in danger. Therefore, the only rational solution here is for, for them to take more money from you rather than actually stop all of these things that are actually endangering us, showing you just how absolutely ridiculous government is. As we are getting reports of crime expanding all throughout the United States, specifically in heavy Democratic areas, as the same Biden administration that spurs on a lot of this criminality, that promotes a lot of these district attorneys, that pushes a lot of these laws while opening up the border at the same time, is now going after your right to defend yourself and to be able to acquire self-defense tools that they are trying to make sure are going to be harder and harder for you to get. As the Biden administration just announced that they are planning to expand requirements to perform background checks for individuals who are trying to buy self-defense tools through shows or online businesses. As rational people are now saying, hey, the same government that's telling us that, that we're in danger is telling us that we shouldn't be able to defend ourselves essentially through these larger restrictions and regulations, which highlights the larger absurdity of this all. As Of course, a lot of what this administration does is just show. It's, it's just virtue signaling. A lot of this is scripted. A lot of this is pre-planned. 
just like all the questions that the President of the United States has ever asked, as of course, it's literally his administration giving reporters questions and telling them to be repeaters rather than actual journalists. This has national media organizations like NPR are dealing with a huge amount of individuals who are tuning out of their programming that essentially has become a larger kind of propaganda effort by the state, as Fox News is also reporting today that there's an NPR whistleblower that is coming out and ousting the liberal slant on the network that is incredibly biased, that is incredibly nauseating to, to listen to, as any voices that, that dissent against this kind of woke, liberal, communistic perspective that they keep prophesizing on their network is essentially never heard. This, as a lot of people are questioning now, if the federal government should continue its partial funding of this organization that clearly has a massive political bias and is just regurgitating and repeating whatever this administration tells them to repeat. And as the corporate media lies to you, as the government endangers their life and tries to take away your ability to defend yourself, it's also important to note that there's larger geopolitical efforts out there to have a great reset when it comes to the larger food industry. As the guy of a part of the World Health Organization, linked and accused of a lot of human rights violations and atrocities in Africa, came out and talked about how our meat-eating traditional agriculture needs to be stopped and, quote, transformed all in the name of making the weather gooder. Describing how us being able to produce food for the people is producing some kind of gases that they don't like and allegedly linked to some disease. Now, now, now listen, I know a lot of people really like, like, like fasting, but uh, I, I think it's fair to say that the human population creating food for itself isn't something that needs to be changed, stopped, altered, or, quote, transformed. As, of course, globally, internationally, there have been very restrictive rules and regulations being put on farmers all throughout this Western world where they have been deliberately under attack. As Unheard has a really awesome article titled, The Great Food Reset Has Begun, We All Lose from the Global War on Farmers. A global war that looks coordinated, that looks planned, that is being carried out, and isn't just making food more expensive, but less readily available to the general public. All being done in the name of pseudoscience that isn't exact, that has been debated, that is controversial, that they believe to the point where they are literally blocking out the sun. As of course, this is a plan that Bill Gates has been trying to do for a very long time as the US government literally conducted secret geoengineering tests by launching salt crystals above the United States as a way to block out the sun to quote, make the weather gooder. Yes, you heard that correctly. Sun blocking salt aerosols were in the sky over California this April 2nd in secret tests that weren't disclosed to the general public because they knew these larger experiments and tests would lead to public outcry. And yeah, rightfully so. As of course, just literally making things up and saying, hey, the, the sun's bad, we gotta stop it, is a ridiculous, stupid, crazy idea with unknown consequences that of course could have huge ramifications on all life here on Earth. And to have these experiments done in secret and, and to have it done through your tax-paying dollars with no transparency, with no oversight, highlights the larger criminality of the state that endangers you, disarms you, and is going after your ability to feed yourself as they're literally trying to block out the frickin' sun and are doing scientific experiments that are literally carrying it out. This is not sci-fi. This is an actual, real situation which there was no conversation about. At least, at least, th there should be some public discourse here. At least there should be, hey, hey guys, we're going to be blocking out the sun here. Good luck. Nope. None of that showing you just the lawlessness, the, the criminality of the government that, in my opinion, has gone completely rogue and no longer listens to the people of this country. And that's one reason why I created LukeUnfiltered.com, a way for individuals to find community, to build culture, and to do really awesome things when it comes to becoming the best, healthiest, and strongest versions of yourselves. And this is why we are organizing a nature hike soon in Austin, Texas, on April 28th, the day after the Minds Festival that we also gave out free tickets to members of LukeUnfiltered.com. Today, by the way, we are giving out free tickets for members of my paying Twitter community 
as the first people to respond to the members only video that's coming out to members of lukeunfiltered.com that's coming out to the paid members of twitter the five people that respond first to the subscriber only video today get free tickets for the mind festival coming up in austin texas in just a few days from now with some really awesome and incredible human beings that will be a part of this larger conversation as i'm also finalizing the dates for the miami florida hike which is also going to be really awesome and really incredible again nature walks touching grass being able to build communities being able to sit down break bread tell stories share tips and tricks with each other be there for each other as a community is more important than ever and that's what your memberships build and grow all through lukeunfiltered.com so if you haven't signed up yet what are you waiting for the link is down in the description below it is a no-brainer we have three options you could sign up for just eight dollars a month or 15 or 99 and you get a lot of different perks a lot of different offers of value exclusive videos almost every single day tickets contests giveaways three master classes a members only store the crap list of things you should be avoiding at the grocery stores the seed oil cards you name it we got it all on lukeunfiltered.com. See you there right after this broadcast, as of course we are still not done with our initial broadcast as there is a larger fight for freedom of speech happening right now in Brazil, of all places, that has started a larger conversation about censorship and the role of government when it comes to destroying any kind of political discourse that they slightly disagree with, that they want banished no matter what. As of course, a lot of people are also releasing a lot of memes, a lot of different videos, specifically highlighting how a lot of people aren't happy with the Brazilian Supreme Court that has been extremely aggressive against Twitter that hasn't been complying with their larger censorship and restriction of speech efforts in their country that Elon Musk has decided not to go along with. Now, Shouts out to Elon Musk for actually standing on larger ideas that are bigger than him, risking a lot of money, a lot of assets, and, and potentially the ability for, for Twitter to even exist inside of Brazil on this larger, more important principle of people just being able to speak to each other. This, as Reuters today, is also reporting that Elon Musk just received an official inquiry from the U.S. House of Representatives regarding the actions taken in Brazil against him, which is, quote, in violation against Brazilian law. All of this as Elon Musk declared this on his social media platform, Twitter, which soon might or might not be available in the entire country of Brazil. This as we're finding out more that the Supreme Court of that country actually wanted accounts of sitting members of the Brazilian parliament and other journalists to be censored all throughout the social media platform, which Elon Musk said no, because these are government officials. These are journalists. They don't deserve to be censored here. And that's the right principle stance to make here. As now, the United States government involvement in all of this in what clearly looks like a larger aggressive move made by Brazil against an American company highlights a, a very interesting situation that could unfold in many different ways. As Elon Musk has declared on Twitter, the severity of the censorship and the degree of which Brazil's own laws are being broken to the detriment of their own people is the worst of any country in the world in which this platform operates, as of course many other social media organizations like Rumble also have faced very stiff, restrictive measures by Brazil, where it looks like the Supreme Court there is essentially acting like a tyrannical dictatorship. This is now many Brazilian lawmakers are taking this fight for freedom of speech in their country, even to the European Union, as this entire issue has sparked a lot of different conversations all over the world, as there might potentially even be some action by the European Union here, especially when it comes to repression and destruction of speech inside of Brazil. As we had testimony today at the European Parliament that Brazil, quote, is an experiment of false democracy and is acting in a tyrannical way, which Elon Musk responded to the testimony here at the European Union by proclaiming, quote, true on his social media platform. He responded to its tyranny in response to a video being made by Glenn Greenwald, who lives and resides in Brazil and potentially is risking a jail term for being as vocal as he is against the Brazilian Supreme Court and current regime under the Lula administration that has been going after their political opponents. 
just very similarly like the Biden administration has been going after their political opponents here in the United States. There's a lot of very weird comparisons between what happened in Brazil. There was also a storming of a government building. There was also a lot of weird connections with populist leaders that uh, very much resemble our current situation here in the United States. As Glenn Greenwald specifically detailed how the censorship framework in Brazil mirrors the tactics that have been employed by the U.S. government that also has suppressed dissenting voices and speech of journalists and journalistic institutions here in this country that were just too inconvenient for them and the current power regime in charge. As right now in Brazil, any criticism of this judge that offends him could result in the punishment with no trial, no due process, as a lot of people have faced the brunt of the Supreme Court and have been imprisoned for daring just to voice their opposition to it. This says it's also important to note here that Glenn Greenwald details how Google, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp have complied with the whims of the Brazilian Supreme Court and government and complied with, quote, every censorship order they got from Brazil. As Elon Musk represents one of those individuals who said, nope, not going to happen on my watch. As Bloomberg is reporting that somehow, quote, Elon Musk picked the wrong fight in Brazil, arguing that he's, quote, disobeying legal orders from tyrants that literally want to ban journalists and politicians from being able to speak in their country. Yes, that's that's the type of upside down, insane logic from Bloomberg who's accusing Elon Musk of stirring up controversy for standing up for freedom of speech. Are you kidding me? As, of course, Bloomberg is standing against the accusation that these accounts allegedly are spreading misinformation and hate speech, which, which there's no actual proof of. As, of course, what exactly the Brazilian government wants to ban and censor hasn't been made evidently clear by them. And according to Elon Musk, it's literally government officials and politicians and journalists that are the ones that are being asked to be censored. And this nonsensical bending of the knee, groveling, prostitute, whore stream-like behavior by Bloomberg is just absolutely pathetic. Specifically done by Juan Pablo Spinetto, an individual who some would describe as a, quote, bootlicker. Another person who's not a bootlicker is, of course, independent journalist online commentator, radio shock jock Alex Jones, that also recently declared that he soon will be suing the FBI and CIA after a CIA agent admitted on tape through undercover video from sound investigations that they could, quote, put anyone in jail and that the FBI, quote, did what we wanted with Alex Jones and that they, quote, took away his money and, quote, chopped his legs off, which they did. As, of course, Alex Jones is now owing billions of dollars after a civil course that, that according to this ex-CIA officer, the U.S. intel agencies played some kind of role when it came to nudging and initiating the larger attack against Alex Jones, which, of course, largely is undercutting his entire operation and taking away a vast amount of money from him in a larger defamation suit that he lost in court. Now, with Alex Jones standing up for free speech and actually having free speech on platforms like Twitter, his voice now is, is being heard by more and more people. It's finally being uncensored as Elon Musk took a risk and said, you know what, we're going to bring him back on the platform, which he did. As another individual that stood up for freedom of speech and journalistic integrity is, of course, Julian Assange. A man that, by the way, has spent 1,828 days in prison, predominantly in solitary confinement as his slow motion prosecution in the United Kingdom by the United States government has reached the point where now even potentially Joe Biden might be dropping the charges against him. As it's important to note here that Julian Assange is a man that, of course, faced the brunt of the U.S. justice system for many years now. He was hiding out in the Ecuadorian embassy until under the Trump administration, Trump government officials literally prosecuted him, had him arrested, and threw him in jail in the United Kingdom, where he has been there for over now five years. And with Donald Trump's administration essentially putting him in jail, Biden releasing him from jail would be a major blow to, to Donald Trump. 
as this is an issue that uh, a lot of Trump supporters are kind of perplexed on that Joe Biden and his administration might be taken advantage of in order to win more votes. As of course, this upcoming presidential election is going to be extremely close. And now with Julian Assange's lawyer coming out and, and describing how President Biden could be considering, could be actually acting and dropping the case against Julian Assange, essentially freeing him, this would be a major mile marker that could significantly make some kind of impact in this election that shouldn't go uh, understated here. This is, of course, U.S. prosecutors are saying that Julian Assange encouraged and, quote, helped Chelsea Manning steal classified documents from the United States government. And with Julian Assange not even being an American citizen, him being extradited here, to face criminal charges, which he's been fighting for a very long time now in the United Kingdom, highlights a very weird, complex situation as the political lines have been blurred here. But I think it's fair to say with what Elon Musk is doing with the larger legal battles ahead of Alex Jones standing up against the intel agencies that have been going up against him with Julian Assange, one of the major chief enemies of the intel agencies potentially being freed soon. Is there a larger renaissance that is highlighting how freedom of speech can't be stopped no matter what? That's a question that I think is worth pontificating on. And if you agree, share this video with your friends and family members. Let me know what you think is really happening down in the description below. But it does seem like the, the forces of, of, of good, the ability of people just to be able to talk to each other and figure out their problems and just to be able to communicate with each other in, in a productive, cohesive way is, is finally becoming a force that is unstoppable. That's my perspective on it. That's my two cents on it. I'm going to continue the conversation and get into some deeper things in the spiritual realm all on LukeUnfiltered.com right after this video. That video available for you right now. If you're watching it on Twitter, reply to it and you will get a free ticket to the Minds Festival. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for, for you guys. Stay tuned for more here on WeAreChange.org. I love you guys. Lots more coming here on this particular channel.